Okay, welcome back to the third part of this multi-part series where I'm going to be converting this Hammond organ amplifier chassis into a guitar amplifier and then fitting it into the RCA lecture cabinet. Uh, I've came up with a, a design I think that I'm going to use and we'll look at that a little bit later in the video with the schematics that I'm going to use to convert this thing. But today what we're going to do is probably shotgun this thing. Uh, I will probably use a few components out of this thing more than likely like these high wattage resistors here possibly might be used and and maybe some of these caps might be used. Definitely not these that are leaky here. But uh, some of these mica caps might be used again. I don't know. But I'll see what's good and what's not and then we'll make a uh, uh, material list for what we need for the next one for the for the new circuit and if I got it on hand I'll just grab that if not I'll have to order some some stuff but uh, for this video we're just gonna kind of rip this thing apart what I'm probably gonna do is just uh, start going snipping this board out of here and then removing the board um, I like to build the majority of my circuit on the board outside of the chassis that way uh, I got a little more room to work and everything and then make the connections uh, once I get the board back in there. So that's probably what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to put this video into fast forward mode and we're going to do a little bit of snipping. I should be able to remove the board now. Alright, I got the board out of there. So it's just a turret board or a eyelet board, I guess you'd call it. And, uh, I'll just shotgun the rest of this off camera and, and clean up all the solder, desolder all this so it'll be uh, reusable. And we'll just uh, trim all these off of the uh, connections here. So, so these uh, tube sockets are much easier to clean up the solder and stuff around uh, once all the wires and components are taken off of them. So this is why I do this, just to uh, get it all, everything out of the way, and then I can go through with my desoldering station and go through there and clean all this stuff up. So uh, I'll knock off the rest of this off the camera, and when we cut back, uh, should be kind of cleaned up here and, uh, maybe we'll desolder one of these and then I'll do the rest of them off camera. Okay. So I got this tour or this eyelet board rather all cleaned up and ready to go. Everything out of it cleaned it really good with some alcohol. So uh, I can probably reuse this pretty easy. Just mount right back in there. I'll do all the prep work on the new circuit outside of the chassis and just stick it in there. Also, um, I've got most of this cleaned up now, as you can see. Most of the sockets are cleaned up. I just wanted to give kind of a demonstration on how I did this. It was really kind of easy. Um, basically what I do on these uh, tube sockets is um, just get a soldering iron 
I uh, pre-fluxed all of the, the sockets with a little bit of a uh, soldering paste flux. And uh, that just helps transfer the heat a little bit better on this old solder. Get it going. And so when you do that, uh, basically, the uh, if you use a solder sucker, this thing goes right over the whole pin and just takes it off. Pretty usually gets most of it in one in one job. Uh, some of these had wires still on them from where I cut it, so uh, I'll just go back and get those off with a pair of needle nose. This solder just pretty much comes off pretty much in one shot after you get it hot so there you go see and you just got that little piece on there you gotta get out and good to go so that's how I did this and uh, I'll go ahead and finish this last one up here and um, I'll get these terminal uh, this terminal strips over here uh, cleaned up and we'll look at the circuit for We'll look at the schematic anyway for the circuit that I want to build for this thing. Be back in a bit. Alright, so I pretty much got all this uh, cleaned up here. All the tube sockets cleaned up. Uh, I left some of the connections made because some of them are going to be tied together anyway. Like this first 12AX7 right here is going to be tied together and um, yeah so I kind of left a little bit I left the um, some of the connections on the rectifier socket as well uh, we'll see how that goes I may have to take those off but I got these terminals all cleaned up on this terminal strip and um, everything looks pretty good now let's look at that circuit, that schematic. Okay, so this circuit is a modification on a on a Hammond AO43 that I found on the internet. They call this the Little Tiger. And basically, it incorporates a reverb into it as well, but other than that, it kind of keeps with the same thing, uh, with the same setup. It's got two... 6BQ5s, uh, a couple 12AX7s. The one modification they did make, though, is they put a solid-state rectifier in it, right here. And they used the octal slot that had the 5U4 rectifier, and they put in a 6N or 6SN7 for the reverb driver. So... I may, I, I want to keep the uh, the tube rectifier, so I may just put in another socket up on top, which I have plenty of room for, if I choose to put this reverb circuit in at all. If not, it's just going to follow this schematic up here, and then we'll have a um, tube rect rectifier right here. So this is what I've decided to go with, and I think it looks really good. I'll put the link to this on... Um, on the video here down below in the comment section and you can find it he's got some pictures of the builds he's made using the schematic some modifications that he's made one of the interesting things about this is is he taps off the 6.3 AC filament line and rectifies that to get 7.5 volts DC to power a uh, computer chip board in our, our uh, Arduino board that gives him some kind of phaser and tremolo effects or something inside the amplifier. So some kind of solid state deal that's going on there. I'm definitely definitely not going to do that. But he's got some interesting things on his page. If you want to check this out, I'll put a link to it. But this is what we're going to probably do in the next video. I should have a lot of this stuff already done. And I will uh, walk you through everything that I've done to it um, up until that point. Before we go on this part, I just wanted to look at this cabinet, and I, as you see here on top, I've got plenty of room for a full-size, you know, 
Accutronics fender type uh, reverb tank. I think they're what 16 inches. Uh, this print calls for the Accutronics 4 Alpha Bravo 3 Charlie 1 Bravo. So I think that's like the same one that comes in like a like the modern Fender Blues Deluxe and Blues DeVille and those types. So I got plenty of room for it right here on top. So I think that'll make a great mounting place for it. I do not have enough room to mount it upside down on the on the shelf, but up here on the top for sure. So given that I do have the room, um, this is that's what I might do. I might uh I might just go that route. So stay tuned.